Welcome back to Viva Houston. The Children's Prison Arts Project is a nonprofit organization devoting, devoted to helping incarcerated youth find strength, self-esteem, and self-expression through the arts. So I want to welcome the project's founder and arts teacher, Burget Gypsy Walker, and board member, Gabriela Valleza Ventura. Ladies, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Gypsy, how about we start with you? You founded the Children's Prison Art Project 17 years ago. Tell us about the work of the project. The Children's Prison Arts Project is an innovative educational theater, visual art, and creative writing forum for incarcerated youth to express themselves constructively. All right. Uh, and to bring hope, to bring art into institutions where there is no art and to uh, create a forum where they really can express their dreams and visions in a positive way. Yeah, and I definitely want to talk with you later on about how this new outlet for them kind of impacts them and their lives as well. Gabriela, of course, you're a board member. Right. You work for the project. Tell us, <laughs> now you guys, this is urgently needed work as well. Tell us why. Mm -hmm. This work is extremely urgent because um, there's, there's, as we know, there are many children who are incarcerated mm -hmm. or who are uh, in these facilities, and um, they don't have, other, they don't have any uh, tools to be able to uh, expel some of these frustrations that they have in themselves. And so the Children's Prison Arts Project comes in and really helps them to um, to give them the tools that they'll need to be able to express themselves in a way that is positive and not negative, as many of them have been doing for. You know, for the, and those are the reasons yeah. why they end up being in, in that system. Well, I know, and, and you know, I know a lot of the guys are, and girls you guys are dealing with it range from anywhere from 13 mm -hmm. to 17 years mm -hmm. old. They probably never thought of theater, creative writing, uh, or art as an outlet before. I want right. to share with uh, some of our viewers some of the uh, publishings that come on here. Which camera we're going to go to right here? Here's a couple of the books, and I kind of want to read one excerpt mm -hmm. for you as well. Again. We're going to talk about how these kids had very little time to learn how to write poetry and or learn art. But we have uh, one, and this is uh, Poems by Girls in Detention, Houston, Texas. I want to read this one uh, quick poem titled Positive. My name is unknown. People ignore me as if I was weird. I wish they can stop the looks. Please let me be free. Can I feel good? Can I be free? Of course I can. I need to believe. Yes, yes, I can be positive. Marlene H., age right. 15. I want to ask you about, I mean, they have very little time. I mean, when we think about a youth incarcerated, mm -hmm. 13 to 17 years old, the situation probably got them there. They probably didn't focus on education a lot right. or probably family issues as well. They have very little time to learn how to be creative writers. What do you guys, I mean, how, how, how much time do they have to learn, look at some of this? Uh, well, uh, as an artist myself, I believe that everybody is an artist. Uh, we just have to open the doors for them, for those who think they are not artistically inclined to, to be. And uh, with the creative writing we're doing, um, it's basically asking youth uh, about certain feelings or situations uh, or why they're in there, but bring out the positive as well. Mm -hmm. Don't only dwell on the negative, because the positive is very important, because otherwise, you know, what is our life all about? We, yeah. we right. need positive input. Yeah. And we get it back from the kids because they do have visions. They do have dreams. They know it is possible to achieve certain dreams if their choices will change. Yeah, and Gabriella, right. I definitely want to ask you, it's not just creative writing. Here's mm -hmm. some of the artwork right. mm -hmm. that they learn. As you were telling me as well, but I mean, they just get very quick training on mm -hmm. how, to, how to do this. Right. They only, the, the, our team goes in for 10 hours, mm -hmm. so they'll go in on a, on a Thursday, and then they'll end the program on a Sunday. And so on Thursday and Friday, the, the children will have two hours to work with, with the artist. We have uh, two performing artists, and then okay. we also have um, uh, visual art. a visual artist. Instructor. Okay. Instructor, right. And so they'll get two, two hours of training each day until on Sunday when they have to actually... Uh, perform the a, the a play or a production, and the art that you're looking at is a lot of times used in the background. And so these are children that have never had any specific training. Uh, they learn from you know and during those sessions they they're giving a topic and then they learn to explore. And once that they topic. go through the sessions, how what kind of change do you see? I know self-esteem is probably going to be an mm -hmm. issue uh, for a lot of these kids mm -hmm. in there. Once they complete yeah. the training mm -hmm. and they come forward with their art they've finished, how have you seen a change in them? 
Well, uh, the children write an evaluation how they f about what they learned, how they feel about it, and it's always they get back a lot of self-worth. They feel happy. Uh, they feel like they have accomplished something uh, because in their life often mm -hmm. they don't finish things. They didn't finish school. Mm -hmm. They don't finish certain things. In the program we're presenting, they start from the beginning to the end. 99%, there's 1% that drops out in the middle because something happened that was unforeseen and they are depressed. I mean, I know there's got to be a change in them mm -hmm. as well. And a lot of the stuff is going to be on view for the public mm -hmm. as well, Gabriella. Right. I mean, you guys have exhibits coming up. I believe we even have info for our viewers as well. As right, well. right. Uh, we exhibit throughout the entire um, city of Houston. We exhibit, for example, at Talento Bilingue de Houston, but at the... Uh, we have some at, at exhibits coming up at restaurants and at uh, coffee shops and, of course, uh, some bars as well. Yeah, yeah. And right, um, the Houston so Convention Visitors Bureau, there's a big exhibit mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, every month we exhibit the artwork in different venues, and every year the artwork changes because oh, yeah. uh, we create, the kids create new artwork, and we have new artwork. New so yeah, yeah, I'd love to take my kids and wife <laughs> and go to one of the coffee shops and see them on display. We want to thank you all for the work yes, you do. We know you're having impact right here in Houston, Texas, so thank you all very much. Thank you yeah. very much for having us. I want to say us. one more thing. I would mm -hmm. like to thank our funders, the Brown Foundation, play a huge part. Houston Endowment, yeah. the okay. Children's Fund, and other Houston foundations. Arts Alliance. Houston yeah. Arts Alliance are very much that we can continue this program over the many years. They're helping you guys make a difference. Thank yes, you. Thank are. you all. Thank you. Well, Harris County Juvenile Probation Department reaching out to young people in trouble next after these messages.